Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton and I am so excited to have Rich Ruoff back with us today because we're going to talk about the 8th annual Lancaster Roots and Blues, a festival of music and art. Right, Rich? Correct. And this time it's going to be in July. It's a Saturday and a Sunday, the 9th and 10th of July. Yeah, we try something different this summer, I mean this year, uh, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so. well, hey, it should be a lot of fun. You have some great venues, and that I'm always curious about when you and I get together to talk about this, because all of this is within walking distance of, in downtown Lancaster. And one of the new venues is the Fulton Theater. Well, I've always wanted to be part of the Fulton Theater, uh, and they've been, they went through a big renovation, and of course we had COVID, and it just made it difficult to get in there. Uh, so this is our getting our foot in the door. We're going to do a VIP party in there on Saturday afternoon, and we're going to have a great jazz band. Uh, but uh, I hope uh, we can the stars will align and we can arrange to continue to bring the Fulton into the fold year to year. Yeah, this is great. So that has a certain ambiance about it too, doesn't it? It's, a, it's one of the great theaters in America, and it yeah. needs to be part of the festival. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, once again, the convention center is a hub because we have, what, the main stage there at Freedom Hall? Yeah, we're in downtown Lancaster at the Lancaster County Convention Center. Uh, we use their biggest hall for the main stage. Uh, and then the hall next door is where we do the art part, which is also where the box office is, is where everybody has to go to pick up their wristbands or their lanyards, uh, your tickets. Uh, and then uh, we also have a small stage there called the front porch stage. Yeah. Uh, and that's really cool. Uh, that's uh, designed like a front porch of a cabin in the woods, maybe down south. And we do a fair amount of acoustic artists on that stage. That was fun. I remember that from last year. Yeah, yeah. It really is a little cool environment right, right. there. Tell us 360. Uh, Tell us 360, uh, one of the great rooms in Lancaster. And uh, we'll be using their main stage in the back. Uh, and we have shows there all Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And the iconic Elks Lodge. Yeah, people love that room. It's just, it's you know, it's an old Pennsylvania social hall. But the, the, the room where the bands play has, has good acoustics, good sight lines, and uh, it just feels right. The Village. And The Village, uh, the longest running club in America by the same family. Wow. Uh, possibly the last year that that'll be in business. Mm. Uh, so we're uh, glad to at least get our foot in the door one more time there. Yeah, boy, yeah. those walls could talk, right? Yeah, they've yeah. seen a few good shows there. <laughs> yeah, really. And then at the Holiday Inn, you've got two ballrooms. One's the Grand Ballroom and the other one's the Imperial Blue Ballroom. Yeah, last year we started uh, using the Holiday Inn after they finished their renovation. And uh, so it's two good ballrooms and uh, we, we do the whole stage and lighting in there. Uh, and they're close to each other, so you can just easily bounce back and forth between the stages. Yeah, and there's Zootropolis, right? And Zootropolis. We're back at Zootropolis. Uh, that's a great... I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's a, it's like an art film house with a good stage and a good sound system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very relaxing space, and the sound's good, great in there. It is, and I, I, I do love all these different venues because each one frames a whole different experience for you with the artists that you put in there. Yeah, that's that's the idea. It's It's, it's not just cookie cutter you know you're mm -hmm. not they feel say hey you should do a festival outside and i'm like i just don't want to build a stage out in a field and you know right. wait for the thunderstorms to come so yeah, yeah. <laughs> no we don't want to do that and i think you put a lot of thought into what artist you put where too. yeah you, well we try and try to make sense for the you know the artists that draw the most obviously play the bigger mm -hmm. stages but then there's some uh, really good artists who play some of the smaller stages that you, and it, i love the intimacy of a club show yeah, I do too. Well, you are the director. This is the eighth year, and we are all excited about this. So let's talk a little bit about some of the acts that we're going to be seeing here. Sure. So it starts on Saturday, the 9th of July. At what time? What's the first show? Well, we open the box office at noon in the art part so that people can actually, if they want, go uh, check out. Uh, the art part is like an art expo, and it's it's artists, visual artists, and uh, craftsmen who are displaying their wares and selling their things. Uh, and that's there all weekend. Um, but the first band kicks off at about 1.30. Okay. All right. So some of the bands that we're going to see and experience on that Saturday. Uh, is it Saran Crenshaw? Saran Crenshaw. I just recently learned of him. And actually, he's been around a while. I don't know why I missed him. You know, I try and keep Yeah, it, why? <laughs> I, I try to keep a, up on all the bands. Uh, but he's a classic blues artist, uh, kind of in the George Benson vein. Uh, oh, yeah, or BB really? King vein even. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I look forward to that too. Uh, Linwood Taylor band with is it Soul Roots? 
Uh, yes, he's out of the D.C. area, though originally he was from Central PA, and he used to play for me at, at, at Lizard Lounge and the Chameleon Club 20, 30 years ago. Uh, another wonderful blues guitar player. Yeah. Okay. Southern Raised. <laughs> Southern Raised, this is mountain music. This is uh, bluegrass, uh, a tinge of gospel, uh, a, a tinge of bluegrass, a tinge of classical. Uh, they're really well-trained musicians, but you're going to feel like you're in the mountains of Kentucky. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And I think they're going to be where? Over at the uh, ballroom, right? If that's what it says. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it says, unless that changes, right. A Sweet Lita featuring uh, Ron Holloway. Been here before, and really a They're great. a festival yeah. favorite. They're out of Annapolis. Uh, just a fun band, and uh, yeah, people love that band. Okay. So Charlie, how do we say this? Apicella. And the Iron City featuring uh, Don Braden. Don right? Braden. Yeah, so Charlie is a uh, jazz uh, guitarist out of the New York area, New Jersey, New York. Uh, and then uh, Ron Braden, one of the great jazz trumpeters uh, playing the scene today. So we're lucky to have that. And that's going to be at the Fulton. We're doing, Theater. they're doing two shows for Are us they? on okay. Saturday. Uh, well, they're going to do the VIP party at the Fulton. Mm -hmm. But then later, for, if you don't have a VIP ticket, you'll be able to see them. I think we have them at Zootropolis, maybe about 8 o'clock. Okay. I love how you do that, too. Because sometimes you have, you know, you want to be so many different places. Sure. And it, it's hard to be at all places at all times. We try and get when we can. We try and get some of the, especially the out-of-town bands, to play, uh, you know, two shows, uh, maybe two, two different days or two different times so that yeah if you have a favorite you want to see you must see and you also want to see them you might be able to time it and see them yeah. later yeah. and while you're talking about that this is one of the great things that you've started and you do with the tickets and i absolutely love it tell us the, how unique these tickets are uh, i'm not quite sure where you're going with well that. I, because you don't have to just buy it for one show oh right so yeah <laughs> it's it's a wristbanded festival yes. so the ticket if you buy a one-day ticket and you, whatever day you show up, it's Saturday or Sunday, uh, you go to the box office, you get a wristband, and you can wander the festival. So it gets you uh, into all, well, we guess we have eight different venues there. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, you know, and I've always say, you know, if one band's not what you wanted to see, you can easily just step to the next venue. They're all within a few blocks of each other. Right. Uh, uh, but really, if you're any kind of fan at all, or you know anything, or you can go on the website mm -hmm. and study the bands and see who you want, and you can just target who you want to go see and, and really have fun with this. Well, that's the other thing that you do with the website, too. It's so comprehensive. You can go on there and plan your plan of attack <laughs> into what you want to see. And Thank it, you. And you can do the direct links. I mean, this is great with the bands. I can tell you I put a lot of work into it. I'm sure, and it shows, <laughs> and I think we appreciate it, too. Well, someone... Uh, Birchwood is going to be back too. So when he just, in fact, he just won a song of the year from the Blues Music Awards last week. Uh, okay. it's, it's an annual uh, event of all the national blues artists. Right. Uh, and uh, he's great. We had him, I guess, four years ago, maybe. Okay. Um, so, uh, but his stature has risen in the, in the blues scene and he's, he's definitely one of the top cats out there right now. Yeah. Well, the little Leroy's are back. Yeah, the, we, we love those guys. They're yeah. local veterans mm -hmm. and they, they know, they don't have, you know, uh, Mickey, well, Mickey Dean, I guess this is his nickname, the guitar yeah, player. Right. Yeah, he, he, he's a smoking guitar player. He, he has a, from the country vein, I would say. Okay. But, he, you know, he can, he can work everything. and He can rock. He can do blues. I mean, he's, he's an awesome player. Yeah. Well, Stephen Courtney, Band of Friends, is going to be here, too, and that's at the Holiday Inn in one of the ballrooms. Um, yeah, and, in fact, we haven't had this version of Stephen Courtney. If you from Lancaster County, you've mm -hmm. probably seen him play at some place. I mean, he used to do a lot of children's shows, but he also has a good band for, you know, the adults. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Billy Walton Band. Billy Walton Band, we like them. They're out of New Jersey. They're kind of a roots and rock band. Uh, you know, they look like a rock and roll band. But they play with soul and like a kind of a Memphis sound, and uh, they're an up and coming band. We they came last year and people just absolutely adored them, so we got them back. Okay, Toronzo Cannon. Toronzo Cannon. He's out of Chicago. He's legit, the real deal, as they say. A uh, blues guitar player. Uh, it's funny. He, I guess, because he was busy working, he didn't play much nationally when he was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's older now and he travels all the time and he's. You know, people love hiring him because he's so good. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Vivino. Jimmy Vivino is, uh, you might remember that name or know that name from the Conan O'Brien show. Oh. He was the band leader for 25 years. 
uh, and he's he's got great legitimacy. He's played with so many of the great blues artists over the years, uh, and his is his his blues version, his blues band that he's taken out on the road. Okay, Jimmy Adler band. Jimmy Adler is a Pittsburgh cat. Uh, he's uh, well respected in the western part of the state, and we bring him in whenever we can. Bobby Gentillo. Bobby Gentillo was it's a Lancaster treasure. Um, mm -hmm. He cut his teeth in the Delta of Mississippi, where the, the heart of the blues was. And he used to work as a recording engineer down there and produce records down there. And then he ended up uh, owning a recording studio here in Columbia, Lancaster County. Uh, and he continues to work with great artists from all over the world. Uh, and we love having him play with his band locally. Um, but he also now manages our what we call our jam session uh, on midnight our midnight jam on Saturday night and it's like an invitational jam where we bring in some of the best artists from around the festival Wow! and this is at the Elks and they play late they play till after two oh, there and, you go. and it's fun uh, re yeah. real high quality stuff yeah well all of this is a lot of fun but we're gonna take a brief pause when we come back we're gonna tell you even more at the festival so stay with us How's everybody doing out there ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Welcome back to Behind the Lines. I'm with the director of the Lancaster Roots and Blues, a festival of music and art, Rich Ruoff. And it's year eight, and it is a Saturday and a Sunday. It's July 9th and July 10th, and we're going through all of the artists and Rich is telling us about what we're going to hear. So I think, Rich, we're up to Lonnie Shields, right? Lonnie Shields is great. He's also from the Delta area of Mississippi, uh, but he now lives in Pennsylvania. And so, uh, and he, just a great blues man. Okay, the Peterson Brothers. They're from Houston, Texas. Uh, I started booking them when they were teenagers. Uh, they really are brothers and uh, they're really good. It, it's interesting, they don't have a distinct sound like a, like, a, like a hit record kind of sound, but they're one of those bands that sneak up on you. So you're in the room and maybe you're not really paying attention, but all of a sudden you realize <laughs> everybody's just kind of grooving at the same time. And yeah. that's a trick. That's a, that's a talent to have, and those guys have it. Well, that's good. You also wrote on here the sermon. The sermon, uh, another relatively new discovery for me, though they've actually been around a while. I don't know why I missed them. I, I feel like I'm, I'm slipping. <laughs> uh, but they're out of Chester County, uh, and that's an organ-based uh, band that's doing a lot of the Memphis soul sound. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany Pollock and Company. She's out of, well, Louisiana, but now she's out of New Orleans specifically because, you know, mm. It's two different worlds, even though it's the same world, yeah. uh, same state. Uh, and uh, what a great sound, what a great singer. Uh, and she plays guitar too, but it's really her singing that makes her distinctive. Wow. Swamp Dixon. Swamp Dixon, I'm, I'm taking a risk on this, but I heard his music on uh, Spotify okay. while I was painting my house. <laughs> and uh, it really worked for me. But then I went to search for him to learn about him. And he's, he's, he came out of the gospel world, mm. uh, and, but now he's switched over to blues and, and even more than blues. It's, uh, it's just a very distinctive sound, but he's a very passionate vocalist uh, and a great songwriter. And uh, I gave him two dates, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And uh, I think, you know, you're not going to see him as a big star. You're not going to find him on Facebook or YouTube or this or that. Just take a risk and go see Swamp Dick Dixon because I think that's how good he is. And then put it on in the background and paint your house. Right? There you go. Okay. Well, it's not just painting music. I, I think he's the real deal. He's and, the real deal. Okay. And, you know, I could be wrong and everybody could hate him, but uh, I, I, I like him. Well, obviously, <laughs> if you like him, I'm sure we will, too. Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers. Well, Tommy and I go way yeah. back. If you're from 
really anywhere in the Mid-Atlantic region, uh, and you're over the age of 50, I'm guessing, uh, or 45, you've heard of Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers, especially when you were younger and going out to establishments. Uh, he was one of the great bar bands in America in the yeah. 80s and 90s. Uh, he's still a great player. Uh, they don't play together that often. Mm -hmm. So when they get together, it's really a special event. We got them back together, the whole band. And they'll be here on our main stage on uh, Sunday. No, wait. No, they're not the main stage. We have them... Saturday at the Village. At, at the Village, yeah. That seems appropriate. That is that is appropriate. <laughs> Actually, they were excited to have them there. That's so, great. Yeah. That's really good. And then we just we talked briefly in the other segment about the Midnight Jam Session at the Elks Club. Is this the first time you've done a Midnight Jam Session? Uh, did you no. did it last year? We, we've been doing it... It's getting more focused. We, we've right. dabbled with it the last three times. Okay. But last year was just amazing. I mean, it was some of the best music I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Uh, and I, I we hope to recreate that. It's kind of like trying to catch magic in a bottle. Mm. Doesn't always work, but when it works, it's really special. And there's something so unique about a jam session and bringing together people that are never going to be together again all yes. on the same stage. Yeah, we had actually Clarence Spadey, or East Coast, you know, phenom, and uh, the Delvin Lamar organ trio showed up. And they were jamming together, and they're out of Portland, or Portland or Seattle. Okay. So you're talking, you know, two icons from the west, the coast, who never would meet each other. Right. And uh, they took it to a whole other level. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Sunday starts again at 1.30, and we've got the little Leroy's back again. Jimmy Adler Band's going to be there. Some of these second dates we're talking about, Peterson Brothers, but Clarence Spady and the Electric City Big Band is something special this year. Right. So. If you've ever seen Clarence, you've maybe seen him as small as a trio or a four-piece, at most maybe a five-piece band. Uh, he's a blues guitar player. He's a singer. Uh, he's been performing since he's seven. Uh, I've known him for decades, and, and he's just a wonderful person and a wonderful player. But I said, let's do something special this year and take it up a notch. Mm -hmm. So he's bringing a nine-piece band. Uh, I paired him up with his old uh, Hammond B3 organ player, Mark Hamza, who's a legend on the East Coast. Uh, he has because he hasn't been touring with a organ player, so he's going to have his piano player, his organ player, uh, percussionist, backup vocalist, uh, female backup vocalist, uh, a second guitar, um, and it's going to be special. We're putting him on the main stage on Sunday at two o'clock. Wow! Yeah, that's going to be dynamite. Yeah, it <laughs> that's will really going to be good. Yeah, I mean, Clarence can lead a band. I've seen him work it. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah this will be really good. Indigenous. Indigenous. Uh, I've known these guys on their very first tour when they were teenagers. I booked them 30 years ago. Uh, and they're called Indigenous because they're Native Americans. I believe they're out of South Dakota. Uh, but the guitar player, he's played the, the Monsters of Guitar, Rock Guitar Tour with all these legendary players. Uh, he's a great player. Mm -hmm. He can rock. He can do blues. Uh, and uh, he's Native American, which gives it a nice, it gives it a, an interesting twist. Yeah. Yeah. Nikki Hill. Back. Nikki Hill, I love Nikki mm -hmm. Hill. She's she's young, she's dynamic, uh, kind of an old blue shouter out of South North Carolina, uh, and so she's kind of a retro artist, but she brings a lot of power and energy to the stage. I'm glad you have Daryl Davis back. Daryl, the great legendary Daryl <laughs> Davis. Well, he's played with everybody. He was, uh, uh, I was going to say Little Richard, not Little Richard, uh, Chuck Berry's okay. keyboard player for the last 20 years of Chuck Berry's touring career. But I first met Daryl at Chameleon Club in 1985. He was touring with a, he had just replaced the keyboard player in a legendary blues band <clears throat> who was getting too old to tour. And he was this young cat and he played at Chameleon and we met and we hit it off. But he's out of the D.C. area originally. Uh... And he has an interesting side gig. He's probably become more famous for that. He, uh, he's actually met with and turned members of the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. And, and he, he's a big black man, if you don't know Daryl. Uh, but he's gentle as a, just a yeah. really good person. Mm -hmm. And he can meet people and everybody likes him. And he's literally convinced people to not be part of the KKK and actually befriended them and they become friends. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. that's great. Yeah. Yeah. He's got quite a story. Vanessa Collier is back. Right. Uh, she's out of, uh, where's the mushroom capital? Kennett Square area. Yes. Yes. Uh, and 
a saxophone player, and we've been doing it now for three, four years at the festival. Mm -hmm. Right. But she's becoming a national. In fact, she just won uh, Horn Player of the Year mm -hmm. uh, again at the Blues Music Awards. Another, you know, literally last week was the awards show. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she's a fan favorite here in Central PA. And speaking of another award winner, Albert Castiglia. Albert Castiglia, uh, touring blues guitarist, and he just won the Blues Rock Artist of the Year. Uh, last year, last week as well. Session Americana. Love that band. They're out of the Boston area. All veteran musicians uh, from the from the Boston scene. So they're everybody who ever played in Boston knows them. And they're touring and they're doing kind of a folk bluegrass pub style rock and blues music. Uh, and th there's seven people in the band, and they take turns doing lead vocals. And they're all capable musicians. Oh wow! So it's really cool stuff. QDK. QDK is. We're so lucky to have these guys that live around here. Uh, of course, the guitar player is Quentin Jones, hence the Q. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a uh, he's a member of the Rockabilly Hall of Fame, uh, and he's actually from Lancaster County. Uh, D is David Usikian, who uh, is and was and is the drummer for the Hooters. Uh, unfortunately, he can't make this gig this summer because the Hooters are playing in Europe at the same time. Okay. So we got we got a we got a fill in guy, a guy named Liberty Devito. He's a drummer, <laughs> and maybe you heard of him. He's been playing with Billy Joel for thirty years, so he's pretty good. You know, as fill ins go. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, QDK. Oh, Kenny Aronson. Okay. Uh, bass player. He's been named bass player of the year through Rolling Stone. Mm -hmm. He's played with. I mean. Everybody, uh, I, I can't even, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> Billy Idol, and Joan Jett, Bob Dylan, uh, David Bowie, he's even played with the Rolling Stones. I mean, and he's, he's a Pennsylvania boy now. Uh, and these guys get together and they just do a fun version of rock and roll and rockabilly, uh, and surf yeah. music. And cool. it's just the funnest stuff. That sounds great. Empire Strikes Brass. Yeah, uh, just a cool, fun horn band, you know, and like the almost like a New Orleans style where they march in the streets kind of thing. But uh, they're having fun with it and they dress up and it's uh, but they're not from New Orleans. They're actually from North Carolina as well, I believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anna Popovich. Anna Popovich will close the show on Sunday night and she's a uh, uh, great blues player. And I've actually known her for a while, but now she's traveling with the best band she's ever had. Beautiful six piece band with a couple horns. Uh, and it's a real high energy, you know, rock and blues show. And one of our favorites locally is Mama Tried, and they're back too. Yeah, we love those guys. Veteran, veteran local musicians, just fun music. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So more to come, as you say. Yeah, because keep checking. Schedule. Yeah, at this taping, we can't. I can't. There's a couple of bands I can't announce yet, but just keep watching the website, and you'll see a few more great artists added. So go on there and get your wristband because it's great. Day wristband weekend. Yeah, I uh, encourage you know it's it's really the best deal in music. Uh, you use so many options and the quality is top shelf. And we still can buy VIP, I gather. Yeah, we do. Uh, we, every year we do a segment of VIP tickets. Uh, we appreciate the support if you can afford it, but you're not going to. I mean, that's really for people who like to support the festival and, and can do it. But really, if you just buy a general admission ticket, you're going to see more great music than you can imagine. And everything you want to know and where to get tickets and band background is at? Oh, uh, LancasterRootsAndBlues.com. We can't make it any more simple, can we? <laughs> LancasterRootsAndBlues.com. Thank you so much, Rich. We're looking forward to this. Don't forget, it is happening this summer, and it is Saturday and Sunday, July 9 and 10, all throughout Lancaster. I'm so glad you're doing this. This is year eight. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. And thank you for joining today, too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, reminding you to look behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.